Hello, beautiful people on the other side of the screen. You are now tuned in to Audio Tree Live. Today is Sunday, April 23rd, 2023, and I am your host, Psalm One. I'm really eager to get into the music today, but before we do that, I want to remind y'all that likes are good, but subscribing to Audio Tree means you get these videos at the top of your feed whenever they drop, so please make sure to do that. And while you're at it, please follow Audio Tree on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you bang your music. Today, we have none other than Illiterate Light in studio, straight out of Central Virginia. They're a rock duo by day, alt-rock duo by night, with a track record of continuous exploration. Their adventures in the studio and on the road made for grand rock tunes full of sweeping anthems and moments of blissful rage. If you came here ready to rock the fuck out today, well, then you are in luck. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Illiterate Light.
here with Jeff and Jake, better known as Illiterate Light. Can y'all pep it up a little bit? You know, a little bit more energy in here, you know? I'm, I'm trying to feel it. Sleepy. I'm a little Did you sleepy. give me decaf? Is that what that was? Because <laughs> uh, uh, it ain't working. <laughs> indica coffee is what I gave <laughs> I like that. No, no. Light Me Up is actually my jam, so I'm very, very thankful that y'all played that today. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, you're currently on the road. And uh, Jake, you just had a birthday, correct? That's correct. 420, bro. 420. Oh, man, how'd you celebrate? Oh, uh, you know, I uh, played a show, mm-hmm. and we actually all went bowling afterwards. Oh, that sounds nice. Um, I'm, a, I'm a bowler. Hmm. Uh, actually, my wife, Lainey, a better bowler, but she's taught me a little. She's taught me a little bit. Okay. She's my pro. Okay. Sorry, I'm still out of breath. You can tell. No, it's, it's fine. Uh, we were in a small town in Wisconsin, Mosinee. And uh, okay. that was where we had Jake's birthday. We had a show there, and it was probably 11.30 or midnight. And it's a small enough town that the cats that were hosting us were like, what do you guys want to do now? You want to go bowling? They're like, well, let's let's call the dude, see if he'll open it up. So they opened up the bowling alley like, for us at midnight, like that's... in the middle of Wisconsin. <laughs> it was pretty Midwestern and pretty cool. Amazing birthday. Yeah, that's rock star shit, actually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they opened the bowling there alley you go. for me. At the end you know? of the night, they gave me a bowling pin, and everybody signed the bowling pin. They said nice. they do that for, like, like five-year-olds' <laughs> birthday parties. But they, they said, Jake, you've got a pretty similar energy, and we think you'll like gotcha. this. Gotcha. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, let's talk about more about touring. Um, you all, uh, met as sophomores, right? In college. That's right. Yeah. And you have a background in environmentalism, correct? You could put it that way. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Well, I was really interested in knowing about like your green touring, uh, experience and, and your experience with like bikes and things like that. Yeah. So. Really, Jeff and I are both avid bicyclists, and uh, we kind of right at the end of college and a couple years afterwards, we're from a small town called Harrisonburg, Virginia. We connected with a really cool group of creative artists, activists, kind of just this wild bunch, and uh, they had been touring for a year or two by bicycle. They, They were musicians as well, but touring their music by bicycle, we saw that and we said, we want to be a part of that. We jumped on board for about five years every summer. We would uh, pack up kind of whatever we could fit on our bikes and bike trailers, like little kitty trailers that you see, yeah. like on the bike path. That was full of like gym bays and like acoustic guitars. And yeah, that's how we started. Yeah, I mean, it, it essentially came down to if you're, you know, writing songs about um, oil and war and then jumping in a car and mm-hmm. going and touring the country like that, um, it feels very um, not in line with what the tunes are about. So sure. getting on the bike was a way to, you know, not be consuming fossil fuels. Uh, that was essentially it. And so we started, you know, for about three weeks each each summer, we would tour all throughout Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, um, and bike everywhere. And we carried a bicycle power generator with us. So yeah. we get to the show, we set the bikes up on the generator, we have a little PA with us, and then now we're amplifying our music 
with the energy that we're making by riding the bicycle. So the whole thing was a sort of self-contained, um, you know, environmentally friendly unit. Sure. And uh, it was really amazing. It's hard to tour the full country like that, and it's hard mm -hmm. to do what we want to do now in that way. But um, the way that we've circled back to that is that we're hosting a stage. Last year was the first year we did it. This year we're doing it as well. But um, we played Newport Folk Festival in 2019, and um, when we were leaving there, we saw a row of about 1,500 bicycles, like, um, right out in the parking lot. And we said, man, how cool would that be if, if we came back to Newport and um, did a performance that was powered by bicycle? People here, you know, seem to be open to that. And so last year, we hosted an actual side stage at Newport Folk Festival, um, and we had 12 acts play on our stage, and the whole thing was powered by solar and bike energy. And it's a completely off-the-grid you know, renewable energy sort of stage that we're designing. And we're very much in the early phases of figuring out what we're doing, but we want to really start spreading the word and starting to think differently about what the world's going to be like to tour in 10, right. 15, 30 years from now. Yeah. So we're just trying to be the goobers that are starting to take steps in the right direction and say, what are some other options out here? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's been our, that's been something we've been up to. That's fascinating, and I'm sure that through the pandemic, that really informed what you all were trying to do and yeah. trying to sort of uh, reimagine exactly. how that's going to work for you. Exactly. That's yeah. amazing. And the duality of, like, a science background <laughs> and music, <clears throat> and music passion is one that we all share. Oh, cool. Uh, I have a chemistry background, so oh, when I read yeah. about your green initiatives, I was like, ooh, my, my little spidey yeah. senses. So, <laughs> nice. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how science sort of informs your daily practices even while you're on tour burning up fuel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm the resident scientist in our band. Okay. <laughs> and by that, I mean uh, I went to college and I got a degree in health science. Okay. Which uh, I, I – Used, I was an EMT for a few years. Gotcha. And, um, yeah, I'd say I'm, a, I'm a, a pretty lame scientist at this point. And especially when it comes to the bike generator stuff, anything electrical engineering side, mm -hmm. um, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> like, we have literally, we just, I, I'm still confused at, at how volts and amps and watts relate. And I'm, it's, all, uh, it's all kind of a blur. Mm -hmm. But something that we bring is, like, we, we're artists, and the... The, the goal for us is to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone in just about whatever we do. And that's one of those times where it's like, I don't know how this bike is powering this speaker, but I, I know enough to ask the right questions. I know enough to plug things in and then try it. And really, like, what it comes down to me, I guess the, the sort of love of science that I, that I bring with it is just the, the experimentation. It's like, is this going to work? Like, I don't know. I've got my idea, but what's it like in reality? You know, like, how does it play out? And that's sort of what this, the, the Newport uh, bike stage that we run and, and a lot of our experiments there are just kind of like, all right, well, let's put this thing to the test and see what, is it, what does it feel like to be on a bike on stage and, and how fast you pedal means the the band can play longer like mm -hmm. that's a that's an insane concept yeah but it's it's this connection it's kind of like the 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 spiritual connection between the the bicyclist and the artist it becomes kind of one thing and the crowd gets involved it's, it's very mystical yeah it's a really cool moment for us yeah i love that and, and it really does um further confirm that like Art is science. Science is art. And mm -hmm. there are so many alignments there. So while you might be a lame scientist, <laughs> you're rocking out right now. We're so. bringing left and right brain together. And that's all I want <laughs> Exactly. Life, you know? And that's why I like you. Yeah. <laughs> We're besties now. That's right. Um, so when you guys are ready, let's go into another uh, set. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Oh, please. I'm going to take a sip of beer. <laughs> science at work. Uh, this is another song that's going to try to bring together two worlds here, the light and the dark. It's called Heaven Bends.
You just heard Feb First, a wonderful ditty from the album Sunburn by none other than Illiterate Light. Um, this setup that y'all have is very intriguing. Um, you have the the mug. That's right, uh, the, ba- the mug. Is it yeah. mug? I don't mug? know. Nobody knows. I thought it was mug. Yeah, yeah, you know I, what I, I mean? Like Let's call it mug. Okay, mug. cool. Mug. I okay. don't know. <laughs> yeah, and and you're and you're playing the drum standing up. This is like the, my science brain is going crazy <laughs> right now. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the decisions to roll with this setup for this tour? Well, so we've been we've been doing something like this for probably the last five years or so. Okay. Um, when we're, we're yeah, the, it's from a pretty small town, and we wanted to tour and pr- basically live on the road and. Uh, some of it came down to not being able to find bandmates in our town. And so we were like, all right, well, what can we do as a duo that, I don't know, scratches our musical itch, I guess. We still wanted to have the low end. We still wanted to have a really high energy show. Um, and so, yeah, we just started experimenting. Um, Jeff found this bass pedal thing here at one point, And so he's covering all the low end down there, tap, tap dancing with his feet. Um, once that started happening, I was like, well... I could just keep sitting down, but I got to one up Jeff a little bit. So, <laughs> oh, okay. very competitive band. I yes. stood up, um, and haven't really looked back since. I just it's it's a regular drum kit, all the same pieces, mm-hmm. just taller stands rearranged a little bit, and uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like we tried it at a gig once and it worked. Yeah, and the sort it really brought out the kind of energy between us, and we said, why change? Sure, if it ain't broke, you know. There you go. Um, but between albums. Uh, between your l- the illiterate light yep. as that album yep. and this album Sunburn, you made some changes as far as studio collaborations and yeah. opening that up, that process up a little more. Can you talk about letting go of that control? Yeah, it's hard to let go of control. <laughs> yeah, but it's easier when you're working with people that are great. Uh, there but you uh, go. that's you, song. <laughs> hey. On the first record, um, we had been touring so much for a couple years that we were just trying to kind of capture. Um, you know, what we had dialed in on the road. Um, we wanted it to sound as live as possible. Um, and as, you know, we wanted to kind of stick to our instrumentation on the first record. And then, uh, you know, the pandemic hit and Jake and I, um, you know, we're spending a lot of time uh, writing tunes on piano, on synth, um, and kind of losing a little bit of the foot bass and playing more string bass. And uh, so for the, you know, we... I think on the on the first record we were trying to define our sound a little mm-hmm. bit more, and at a certain point during the recording of Sunburn, we just said "Illiterate Light" is whatever you and I do together. It's not really tied to that. It's not tied to this. It's not tied to any of that. Whatever me and Jake make together, that's Illiterate Light, um, and that sort of identity shift allowed us to just think differently, and you know and write songs differently for this new record. Um, and we just weren't thinking about how we're going to play it live. We were just thinking, does this sound cool to us in the studio? And is it making us happy? And uh, so we incorporated um, our producer, Adrian Olson, and um, he was really helping us tweak out on a lot of the synth stuff. Our good friend Danny Gibney was engineering the record and also playing bass on a bunch of things. Um, and we just kind of brought in like the hometown uh, you know, our, our good friends to help us bring this record to life. And we're really happy with how it turned out. And it feels like we're starting to find a new sound that feels really exciting to us. That's awesome. Um, it sounds almost like a full circle moment where, like, you're kind of doing the band out of necessity and what, what, what can we do? And now exactly. it's like, what can we delegate? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like some of the limitations that we deal with as a duo um, sometimes that breeds a lot of creativity and that is really cool for us. And other times it's just a limitation. And we're like, man, I'd really love to write a song on that's piano driven, but um, we can't do that like this. So we've just kind of loosened the reins a little bit and mm-hmm. just said, like, let's just write, let's create, let's just have fun. And just whatever is sparking joy for us, that's what we're going to follow. Amazing. Amazing. And that's a, there's a freedom in that, too. Absolutely. Um, we're going to get a little existential here. Um, for your, the title of your latest album, is yeah. that true that it came from a lyric in Heaven Bend? That's right, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, birthday panic attack uh, with friends that forgive and forget. Screamed so loud the whole town heard. It was raining and I was sunburned. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where the record title comes from. And we just were drawn to the the word um, <laughs> just on a, 
uh, gut level. It felt right. And I don't know that there's a whole lot more to unpack other than that song for us in that moment is one of the emotional peaks of the record. Yeah. It's a, a kind of a moment where, you know, heaven and hell come together. And uh, so we felt like that was a good way to, you know, sum up what we're trying to do with this album. Yeah, they inform one informs the other. You can't have light without the dark, exactly. you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I won't get too much more existential because this will turn into a therapy We're just getting session. started. It, I know. Like, peel back, just peel back the layers one by one. Um, y'all are from Virginia, right? That's right. Is it yeah. truly for lovers? Because then I need to visit more. Oh. VA is for lovers, and Virginia is for music lovers. And all, full disclosure for everybody watching, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland until I was 18, and Jake grew up in Northern Virginia in Alexandria. Gotcha. And then we, uh, we met at Harrisonburg, in Harrisonburg, Virginia, um, and I've lived there ever since, and Jake has lived in Nashville for a couple of years and is now moving back to Richmond, which is near us, so, okay. uh, you know, it's kind of a funky way to do a band, but we make it work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, it's tight, Yeah, so. Yeah, and, we, and, and, you know, for me, like, I love, so, you know, Harrisonburg is, they call it, you know, the friendly city, it's right in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley, which is about 120 miles long, um, and I love it there. I mean, I, I built a little studio during the pandemic. Um, I write out there every morning when I'm home. Uh, it's a very peaceful place, and it's a place where artistically I can, you know, sort of um, live like a monk and, uh, and then come out on and tour for months out of the year and be super social and have a good time. And then when I get home, I can, you know, go out to watering holes and, um, you know, go hiking and just kind of lay low a little bit and recharge my introversion. That's very cool. Sounds good. It's good. Uh, <laughs> you should come. Yeah. Oh, don't come don't. on by. All right. Don't don't um don't threaten me with a good time. I'm, I will be there. I promise. Um. So are y'all ready to get into the next chunk of songs? Absolutely.
Virginia, hurry up before we both start to rust.
A very, very big thank you to Illiterate Light for blessing us today. And as always, major love to everyone here at Audio Tree spreading the gospel of live music. Illiterate Light is currently on the road and will be doing shows all spring, summer, and heavy fall touring. So make sure you grab tickets when they show up to your city. And also, if you haven't, check out this wonderful album, Sunburn, because you love good music and we want you to thrive. Once again, likes are good, but subscribing to Audio Tree means you get these videos at the top of your feed whenever they drop. So make sure to do that. And if you want the audio, you can stream this session via Bandcamp, Spotify, uh, What's the other one? Apple Music, all the DSPs, all the major platforms, you can stream this session. Finally, follow Audio Tree on social media for more fun content. I'm Psalm One, and I love talking to y'all. Till next time, stay dangerous. All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?